want answers? I'm as mad as hell, and I'm not going to take this anymore. You want answers? You have offended my family. I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth. And you have offended a Shaolin temple. You can't handle the truth. Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. Hoorah! Radical Brand. We got some college news for you from the University of Alabama, and uh, this will shock you, I'm sure. College students in Alabama are smoking pot. Yes, I know. Shocking news, is it not? Got some news. Uh, this was came from the Crimson White. Now, the Crimson White is the student newspaper at the University of Alabama, and uh, apparently the West Alabama Narcotics Task Force, or WANT, I guess, uh, carried out raids on and off campus uh, there in Tuscaloosa. 61 students were arrested Tuesday morning. Uh, the Tuscaloosa Police Chief Steve Anderson called it a record pot bust. Uh, they carried actually a total of 74 total arrests on or near the University of Alabama campus because there's a serious problem going on here. College students are smoking pot. The uh, Now, it wasn't just... The Tuscaloosa police involved in this. No, this is a task force, people. We got Tuscaloosa PD. We got University of Alabama PD. We got the U.S. Marshals involved, the Northport Police Department. And who else we got? Oh, Tuscaloosa County Sheriff's Office. And they began these raids at four in the morning, <laughs> four in the morning and conducted them all throughout the day. Now, in the course of the investigation here, this task force of multitudes of our law enforcement agencies pouring in countless hours of police investigative time, uh, two months of time. As a matter of fact, it's not countless two months of time. We just don't know how many particular cops are involved, but for two months, they carried out this investigation and used confidential informants, AKA snitches or rats. Actually, there is technically a difference, but we'll save that for another rat, uh, rant. Uh, so these, uh, these confidential informants and the university, cooperating with the police at this time as necessary. The uh, police chief said, we used individuals known as confidential informants to go in and make purchases for us, end quote. All right, so we've got all these cops, all these various agencies, putting in time and effort to find these people who could be turned against their fellow students, usually the kids that get busted, and then, hey, you know, if you'll go in and make some buys, we'll go easy on you. We'll give you a plea deal. We'll give you a probation, right? So go, you know, a little bait for bigger fishes, basically. Send the kids in back to school to betray their friends, betray their friendships, to have their whole academic life turned upside down, to live in stress and fear. So we've, we've done two months' worth of this investigation here. And so what they managed to accomplish here, 74 people arrested on 183 charges, mostly centered on the sale and possession of marijuana. That's right. Mostly just marijuana. Now, a small number of arrests were made for cocaine, ecstasy, and LSD, and three weapons were seized. <laughs> 74 people, and uh, mostly you get marijuana <laughs> and and maybe a, a, a gun or three here. All right. Oh, but it says weapons. Let's not assume they're guns. <laughs> I don't know. It could be uh, crossbows, let, knives, who knows. All right. There were, uh, according to one of the students who saw the raids go down, he said, quote, there were about seven to ten officers all wearing bulletproof vests with handguns strapped to their thigh. Two were just wearing street clothes with badges around their necks, and they were escorting about six students in hand, all in handcuffs, end quote. That's a nice day to wake up and be going to school, getting ready to go, go to class. And uh, there's armor-clad men with weapons taking out your classmates because they might have been smoking pot, by God. So at the Tuscaloosa Police uh, press conference, uh, law enforcement in the area said they wanted to send a clear message to anyone dealing drugs. Quote, if we discover who they are, we're going to come after them. Although a lot of people consider it to be a harmless drug, it is still illegal to possess it, sell it, distribute it in the state of Alabama. Therefore, it is against the law. We are still going to enforce the law, no matter how harmless people think it is. End quote. This, folks, is stunning to me. There's some real good to be mined out of that paragraph coming from 
the police chief. Number one, he keeps saying it. He knows it's about marijuana. There was some cocaine found. There was some ecstasy found. There was some LSD found. There was three guns or three weapons found. But the whole subject of the press conference is it. He's playing in our frame now. He's playing in our ballpark because he knows the discussion is about marijuana and kids smoking marijuana on campus. And number two, the word harmless is in that quote twice. They're using our terms, harmless. It's lo less harm. A lot of people think it's harmless. A lot of people think it's harmless, not a minority. And he implicitly acknowledges that what he's doing is merely enforcing a law regardless of what the people think. We are still going to enforce the law no matter how harmless people think it is. Times are changing even in Alabama, folks. Now, as this story continues, the task force uh, did a two-month investigation, raids on and off campus. Uh, back in 2011, they uh, processed almost 1,600 kids for smoking pot. And in 2010, they handled uh, 1,500 kids for smoking pot. Now, while this was going on, while we were dedicating scarce police resources and time and investigatory abilities to try to catch kids smoking pot, at the UA, there's a report that came out on Alabama college crime on campuses. And there's a report that's mandatory uh, under federal law called the Cleary Act, where colleges and universities have to report their campus crime data. And from this report, this was from, now this is from 2011 on a blog at uh, alabama.com, al.com. One of the most difficult categories of campus crime and perhaps the most worrisome for parents of college women is forcible sex offenses. Most of these crimes aren't raped by a stranger, but instead involve an acquaintance. A National Institute of Justice report in 2005 found that one in five women, let me repeat that, one in five women will be raped or sexually assaulted during her time in college. And an investigation from the Center for Public Integrity found that many incidences aren't reported under the Cleary Act because of confusion over what should be included and exemptions for confidentiality. So one in five may be a little low. One of the uh, people rep uh, reporting on this was uh, quoted as saying, we know that an awful lot of sexual violence against women goes unreported. Less than 50% gets reported. So what is it, one in three? One in two? And we're going to worry about whether or not there's smoke and pot in the dorm rooms, or in some cases in this state, they were going off campus. Now, maybe they would reply that, you know, we shouldn't be condoning these young people using drugs. Never mind the fact we're talking about a plant, not a drug, but that's a whole nother rant. But they talk about how one of the measures they might use to curb sexual offenses is blocking the use of alcohol and drugs on campus, right? A lot of these date rape, quote unquote, situations have to do with alcohol and so forth. Now, the University of Alabama tops the list of 540 alcohol-related arrests over this same time period, uh, a rate of about 20 arrests per 1,000 students. So they do bust a lot of kids for alcohol as well as busting them for pot. Uh, Auburn came in second with 208 alcohol-related arrests. But there's a major way to ch major effort to change the way alcohol violations are handled, according to this report. In 2009, University of Alabama started referring first-time rule breakers to student services, where they then go through an alcohol education course and community service rather than citing them and sending them to Tuscaloosa Municipal Court. That dramatically dropped the number of reported violations. The Cleary numbers fell from 176 arrests on campus in 2009 to 15 last year. So... While we know alcohol is a major cause of these sexual assaults that are happening to almost, what, one in five, one in four, one in three college women at the University of Alabama, the punishment for using alcohol illegally has been drastically reduced. And yet we want to go and spend all of this task force time busting kids for smoking pot, which has never been shown to lead to an increase in sexual assaults, violence, or other reported causes of death, like overdose, like kids puking and dying and choking on their own vomit, and alcohol overdosing from keg stands and shots.
This is the Russ Belleville Show. The Russ Belleville Show is blogging and podcasting daily at RadicalRuss.com. And lest I forget, shame on the Crimson and White for publishing the names of all those kids who were busted for marijuana. Shame on you. It's all the time we got for Hour 1. Stay tuned for Hour 2. For Brian the Red and Big Dan, I'm Radical Russ. Until next time, take care of each other, Tokers!